Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Dinks with Kinks. Before we get into tonight's episode, I want to remind everybody that we are in fact on that social media at Dinks with Kinks on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, come check it out. See the cool stuff. I am one of your wonderful hosts, John Andera, and with me as always are my two favorite and the sexiest people I know, Miss Rebecca and Miss Rochelle. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, you know, I almost I almost brought my pocket watch tonight. I really wanted to uh, like show you. It's really cool. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love to wave it around. It is almost hypnotic. Oh. You know that's that. You know I have some stories about hypnotic <laughs> being drunk on hypnotic. <laughs> oh, I could be a little drunk on hypnotic. I mean, I've done it before. Yeah. But I mean, I don't mean to mesmerize y'all, but uh, tonight's episode is pretty freaking awesome. I'm pretty awesome. mesmerizing right now. You absolutely are. Uh, <laughs> Survey and says if you ever want to, yes. <laughs> and if you ever want to see what we're talking about, you should definitely check out our live streams every Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash the Dondero, and you can see why we just think um, Rebecca is absolutely hypnotizing. <laughs> mesmerizing. No, no hypnotizing. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's both, okay? She's both. Y'all are both pretty, but she is both. Okay, so We're what's our pretty. topic tonight, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let's talk feet or something. Okay, all right. This sounds good. Cool, 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 cool. So arches. No! <laughs> arches. Uh, you know, arch villainy could work into this kink pretty well. But no, we are talking about hypnosis. And its role in BDSM and just its fet it's self a fetish, right? But so, okay, go ahead. Tell us what it is. No, I have a question. No, no, go ahead and ask your question. Isn't hypnosis very similar to like subspace though? Yes and no. Okay, I, I mean, when I when when I was thinking about this kink, I was like, and this fetish, I'm going. But when you're in subspace, it's very similar to being hypnotized. Like you're open to suggestions, you're you're in a different headspace. Like so I was thinking isn't it similar? That's a, it's a hypnotic state. You're not put there through hypnosis. You're put there through other methods. <laughs> I, so I, now I like let's those let's <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about hypnosis. I mean, I think we've all seen every cartoon ever made mm -hmm. in one series or another somebody gets hypnotized and thinks they're a chicken uh why also is a chicken any zip con why is it know. always a chicken i'm why still waiting for them to take it next level and actually have somebody lay an egg that would be super mm. hypnosis that would be pretty cool that means they'd be uh, shitting on no, the floor <laughs> hypnosis is uh actually the, the definition of hypnosis is putting somebody in a hypnotic trance a uh an absolute trance where they're highly suggestible and almost, almost in a dream state where they're not fully connected to uh, their conscious, but not lost in subconscious. They're not asleep. They are essentially put under like a trance, like, mm -hmm. and they're very mm -hmm. suggestible. Uh, and yes, this can happen many ways. It could happen through subspace. It could happen through drug use. It, there's, there's a thousand ways. But the actual act of hypnosis, yeah, Rebecca, yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual act of hypnosis is the effort to put somebody in that trance without right. you know any by any means necessary but it's only hypnosis if it's that's my goal that's where i'm going for that's what i'm doing so yeah never, you can be i've never been hypnotized i think uh, neither have i i've actually yeah go ahead no i think i've been i think i was i've been my brain goes to like the only time I've been in that state has been through subspace. I, I just I th I think that being hypnotized because I am too what's going on what's going like I can't can't turn my brain off. <laughs> you know? yeah. Same. I mean, not everybody is um, open to suggestion, and that's what it's usually called. Like, if you're able to be hypnotized, you tend to be open to suggestion. Uh, you have the ability uh, to suspend your consciousness for a hot minute and some people lack that ability i do like that ability i don't i honestly i i'm kind of envious of people who can be hypnotized because there's a lot of really cool things you can do with hypnosis um it is essentially jailbreaking your brain yeah a lot of people use it for things like trauma 
recovery. They'd mm-hmm. use it for stop smoking. Like they, they like it, hypnosis is used in a lot of things for your brain. It is jailwalking, like putting shit in there, taking shit out. <laughs> um, believe it or not, at least, uh, and I'm grabbing a quote from the internet, so we know its accuracy is about twelve percent, like all uh, internet accuracies. Uh-huh. But only about thirty-five to forty percent of people are able to be hypnotized. It is actually harder to hypnotize somebody than to not hypnotize people. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm special because I can't be hypnotized. I'm like, you are the majority here. Huh. Yeah. Do you think... Especially, especially logic brain types like myself. Mm-hmm. No, it has nothing to do with logic brain. It just it actually has uh, neurodivergence. Yeah. Which tells you a lot about our society. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the more neurodivergent of us are you are, the harder it is to hypnosis because essentially neurodivergent people don't have a hand on the wheel all the time. To be uh, hypno- you know, hypnotized, you have to have somebody have your hand on the wheel to take your hand off the wheel. Mm-hmm. Neurodivergent people typically have somebody else have the hand on the wheel. It's them, but not them. Mm-hmm. Well, well nice that would by saying logic brain instead of using the fancy words. Well, I, I, that would make sense why none of us have been able to yeah. be hypnotized because we're all neurodivergent yeah. in our own way. Oh, absolutely, and you know, like I said, it's not just logic brain. It's it's logic brain. Yes, there mm-hmm. there there's many different reasons people can't be hypnotized, but it all boils down to neurodivergency. If you are single divergent, you can in fact let go of that steering wheel long enough to have your subconscious kind of take over a little bit. That's why uh, a lot of people who uh, are neurodivergent don't fully remember their dreams or their dream outside their scope of comfort. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But, I mean, enough about the science. Let's talk about how it evolves kink. And we're going to talk about two different types. We're actually going to talk about uh, real hypnosis and how it's used to bring uh, handle, you know, subconscious orgasms. And uh, role play. Let's talk. Let's talk like you know, old school cartoon. So first, let's dive into like the actual scientific hypnosis for handsless orgasm or oh sensationless orgasm. Oh my god! Orgasm. I wish I could do. Now I wish I could do it. God, wouldn't that be great? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, god damn my brain. So th- <laughs> there are a lot of people who use hypnosis as a form of just like. Uh, when you're using hypnosis to like quit smoking or uh, any type of like self-help hypnosis, of course, it can be used for naughty fun, uh, i.e. telling your brain that you are currently involved in a sexual act to the point to where you achieve orgasm through your – literally, your brain just hits the orgasm button. That's it. That's what happens. That's, that's the sum variant of it. Your brain just goes, oh, orgasm. Yep, see, I would, I would suck at that. Be like, that's right, he's doing things. That's right, he's using his strong hand. Well, now I want to try it. Now I want to be like, you know mm-hmm. what, I can't be hypnotized, but now I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, there have been case studies of people doing exactly this. And, you know, I don't know the facility, you know, we're not a paranormal podcast, so I'm not really digging deep. Uh, but I, I, I encourage our you know listeners, if you're listening to this, go listen to a podcast about hypnosis and you can hear some of the stories about how you know serious this is. But essentially it is. It is telling your brain to forego all the things it requires for orgasm and just get to end result. So you can have a you know stimulation. And they're usually, uh, and from what I've read, they're usually the most intense orgasms you've ever had because, like I said, your body goes from zero to orgasm Mm -hmm. and that just sends your body in absolute shock well it makes sense um that that would be the most intense orgasm you have because um i i you know constantly educating myself but um i i've read how to give yourself better orgasms you know just different because you know we did that orgasm stream one time but it's all about changing your mindset it is not about the physicality of it like you can have the same like the the same action like the same somebody for example rubbing your clit or whatever in the same motion same way but if you're in a different mindset the orgasm is going to be different 
So when you're skipping all of those steps and going straight to your brain going, you're going to have an orgasm, of course it's going to be. It's like it's constant. It's a concentrated dose. It's like the concentrate Mm -hmm. of going straight there. And that makes complete sense. And it could probably be very addicting, I can imagine. Oh, absolutely. Um, And just the, you know, the logic waves of the brain of being able to tell yourself to do anything and your body responding to it. Uh, it's the same way as, you know, it's, it's any type of that mystic art style. And I don't, I, I say mystic art, but this is actually like scientific proof, like of, you know, trance state of just pretty much opening up the button board for your brain and being able to hit the things. Now you can't make somebody like stop breathing through hypnosis. You can't make somebody actually believe they're a chicken. You can suggest stuff and their brain can be like, okay, I would normally do that. Yeah. So you still have to be in the right mindset for it. I can't hypnotize somebody and make them orgasm against their will. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. You have to actually be actively thinking, this is what I want. This is where I want to be. And I am allowing somebody else to take the hand, you know, steer the car for a hot second. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's let's put the delusions of you know fantasy out because we're about to talk about the fantasy. We're about to dive into right. the not real role play side of it. But for this, the actual side of hypnosis, mm-hmm. it has to be a hundred percent consensual. Um, and and that also makes sense because um, hypnosis is very close to meditate when you get in a meditation in a meditative state, and you can't get in that deep. And anybody who's meditated in a in a really deep way and for a purposeful way, um, when you get in that state, you can't you're not going to get there just by going, I'm just going to sit here. You have to be very like you have to put your brain there. And so it it sounds very similar to that. Like you have to go, well, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. And this is how I'm going to do it. So that's. Mm -hmm. Sounds very smart. Which is why neurodivergent people struggle with it because they have trouble letting anyone else take control. Because we don't have control. Yeah. <laughs> we have, no, we have such a tight handle on control that we have no control over it. Gotcha. Like, but my control likes it tight. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, then you cannot be hypnotized. It is impossible for your brain. Okay. Um, By the choice of tight or hypnotized, I guess I'll have to set up for tight control. Uh, no, I honestly, I, I wish I could be hypnotized a hundred, hundred times over because, like I said, Me there's too, so much. Because it seems like it'd be entertaining, benefit. for sure. It not only entertaining, but it is. You know, you can do a lot for good mental health. You can yeah. kind of reset yourself in that so many nice. regards. Uh, for sure. Um, now, you know, and like I said, th- that is the very science-based form. Now, let's let's throw science out the window. Let's get let's let's get it the fuck out of here. Because we now. don't want any of that shit. Why would we want We don't want no that? science. No. We, mm. We've talked science. We've talked parascience. Let's get to the great Meresmo. Meresmo? That is hypnotic Do, do we want to try a different path? This one sounds a little rocky. Are you trying rocky. charisma or charismo? No. No. Meresmo. Miro, maybe? Yes. Is it called Meresmo? No, I'm just making a character name up for myself, guys. Oh. Just let me have my. Just oh, let me have a okay. name. You guys are just ju- name judging. It's cool. It's whatever. I'm sorry. We I don't, don't want to be nobody we, now. We don't. We, I mean, we, oh, John, come back, come back. We're not. We're not nickname shaming. All right, Moresmo, come lay it no, on me. No, no I, have come been, on, I have been nickname shamed. Oh let's my talk gosh. About it. Um, <laughs> let's talk about some role play uh, hypnosis, and this is actually very popular in the. Uh, genre of sub and dom situations and consensual non-consent um and just like that because like i said this is where we're going to cross that line of it's not real let's let's be honest mm-hmm. this is 100 percent role play um like wrestling i'm sorry wrestling's not real i oh, had to break what? to a lot i know i had to break oh. a lot of listeners out there John, it's all about the performance heart. I know we watch right we don't watch wrestling for the really you know reality of it we watch wrestling for the good acting in it and uh, hypnosis uh, role play is fantastic. It's got some great role play in it. But this is when you pretend to be under the power of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it's actually one of my favorite forms of consensual non-consent. 
because it is the most consenting form of consensual non-consent. Explain. Well, I put you under my power, my spell, and I'm going to make you do stuff that you don't want to do. You actually have to do them. You're playing along. Oh, fair. He was close, but I'm glad he didn't say, I put a spell on you. Now you're I am alive. I am not using any physical force to make you do sexual mm-hmm. items. I am telling you, I'm using my mind powers. <laughs> um, <laughs> mind talk. That's the name I was looking for. Mind talk. The mind taker. Harvey Birdman. Okay. Turn it at law. <laughs> That's Boy, I bet you saying? five of our audience members went to that show. That show was a good. That was a good cartoon. Yeah. Um, but it is. It's one hundred percent role play. It's it's consensual non consent of I'm putting you under a hypnotic spell, and mm-hmm. you will do all the things that you would never normally do, and you're going to do them willingly. And you have to go. All right, I will do them, master. Whatever you say. I'm under your power. <laughs> Hopefully you do a little more vigor than that, um, but it is. It that's that's essentially what it is. It's fantasy. Now I want to try that. <laughs> right. I mean, the sub of me is like, you know what? Yeah. All right. What about you, Shep? Would you would you role play? Would you role play a hip, hypnotist? If I could ever gain the powers to do so, I would gladly. And it's also or just role play. And this also brings back almost the romanticized, you know, things of of vampires and such. Because, you know, vampires, they always, in those roles, were always hypnotize their victims and stuff like oh, that. What do they call that? Compel. They compel. Yeah. Very and that's arguments, where... Yes. Uh, he just brought up a point because remember uh, last week when, when I said we were doing hypnosis and you said we've covered that before. Mm-hmm. We have talked about hypnosis in that episode. Oh, uh, that's where I remembered it from. Okay. All right. I mm-hmm. knew we had talked so about he, it. He did. And and that's it. The, the vampiric power of, you know, I'm going to allure you and control you with my vampire powers. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's essentially like that, just, no. it's full submission, mm-hmm. consensual non-consent. You are unwillingly becoming willing. I I can, I can see, uh, as somebody who is a sub, somebody who, um, I, I just, I feel like that's also a good way to move past, um, some of your traumas and reservations, not all of them, I'm not saying, but some of like like the ones where you are you want to try them, but you you're just not there like and and you just like, okay, well, let's role play this and then way you are surrendering that that control in in a sense. And so it's one of those I, I can I can see how that would be very freeing as well. like mm-hmm. and, and you know, you don't have to make choices you are just being told what to do and hopefully you have a, a you're with a, a top or a dom who is who is going to just be like okay this is why we're doing it or we're just you know maybe we'll try some new fun stuff you know exactly i mean that's that's exactly what it is <laughs> and i love that i love that kind of stuff i love and you know me i'm i'm a huge fan of role play and i think this is this is probably one of the most fun role plays and it's very like you could go you could go as serious or as wacky with it as you want. Like there's no level. You can do the gothic vampire or you could do the 1960s Batman villain style. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> watch, you know, watch the watch swaying, the pocket watch. Watch this way. Watch the pocket watch. Yeah, the little yeah. spiral. Your Again. eyes are getting heavy. You are getting sleepy. And actually, a lot of the porn I have seen is very campy like that. I and I love it. I absolutely love it. I go go look up hypnosis porn. feel you have to be. You have to be a little yeah. campy. That's, the, the, like, hypnosis is one of those things that even though it's role play, 
like, yes, you can take it seriously. Yes, you can act serious about it. But I feel like this is one of those ones where in and of itself, a lot of role play is fun. It's supposed to be campy. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something that you Mm -hmm. wouldn't normally do. It's outside of your comfort zone. And especially if you are getting hypnotized to do stuff that's outside of your comfort zone. I mean, it makes a lot of sense that it would be campy, you know, (laughs) and silly. Chip, what is your take on... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Chip. I would would love to be the the campy thing to where someone would use one of those um, hypnotic spiraling wheels as the hypnotic thing, you know? Remember those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. Or um, a nice little uh, watch, little timey watch. I need to get the little spiral bra, like the one that like spins on your boobs, like. Yes. <laughs> also yes. Yeah, I I feel like my boobs are hypnotizing without the spiral bra. Yeah, that, that, that would be this. That would be the final thing of like a guaranteed work. A yeah, guaranteed, so. like hello, spaced out. <laughs> It's like, since you're staring there, give me your money. I'm not a stripper. <laughs> no, you'll just hypnotize them. Says you're staring no. too much. Now you must pay for the view. <laughs> That's right. That well, not my OF ship page. <laughs> yes, me, me. I wanted to get. I wanted to get your opinion on uh, hypnosis, like actual hypnosis through flogging, not just subspace, but any type mm-hmm. of repetitive, like you know. Essentially, I've, I've, I've w- watched you work, and I've seen people slip into and you know we often refer to it as subspace but it is a trance-like state you know and we talked about this in the subspace episode about this but what do what are your thoughts on that because at that moment in time they are in a hypnotic state like they are almost hypnotized people are mainly recessive to that sort of scenario if you keep the motions repetitive and fluid to a to a very specific um, continuing rhythm Um, because I've done a lot of experimenting with that particular scenario and I noticed it's not necessarily the implement uh, you use or how you use it but the it's um, if you can maintain a a long sustained rhythm of a particular items that could help them into yeah. their states more. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Very pattern based. Yes, it is. So, Rebecca, you have been in subspace before. Like, I have. Do, do you go ahead and give us like, like your take on that experience as far as like being hypnotic almost? Um, it's very much when you go into subspace, um, you, you get disconnected from your body. You really do. Like your brain, your brain almost disconnects. And we talked about that when we were talking about subspace. Like it, you go, it sort of go into shock. But at the same time, um, you are very suggest like open to suggestive things. So um, for me, it becomes a very scary thing because I don't have control. I I know like I'm still aware but I don't have control of a lot of what's going on around me because I am in an altered state of mind and so um I have to be very clear with um you know whatever scenario I'm you know whatever dynamic I'm in at the time that they know when I get into subspace that they, they that that's usually when any experimentation stops like it I could because then they have to they actually I have them talk me down so them talking me back is is very important so that's part of that suggestive part of being in subspace is they are like connecting with their voice it it brings me back to a more conscious state in a safe way so um yeah I, I like that's why I I don't know if I wouldn't be able to be hypnotized, but at the same time, because I'm neurodivergent, like subspace, I've gotten there differently. So, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's one of those things. But yeah, that's why it's very important for me personally that because I am disconnected when I'm in subspace, that they do their suggest the suggested part of that is to talk me back, telling me I'm safe, telling me it's okay because I am not 
fully conscious at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But Subsace is and fine. And that I get. <laughs> yeah. Subsace is very... And it's, and it's very much like... It's a lot of times the closest people are going to get to a hypnotic state without going to a hypnotist. Mm-hmm. And again, like I said, if, if you want to argue my stats on hypnosis... I'm not going to argue with you because, like I said, I don't believe any stat I see on the internet unless it's through, like, you know, the CDC or a news, you know, like an actual scientific source. What? You're going to give us credit? You're going to give us credibility, John? You're going to give us credibility? Really? Oh, God, no. Okay, I just, okay. I learned shit on the internet. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I don't know if I'm right. <laughs> All right, that's fine. But... <laughs> You know, I think, no, I think honestly, just hypnosis is just a lot of fun. And, um, it's, it's one of those things. I don't think you can do any evil with it. No. Now I want to go try it. Like, I really do. Like, I hadn't really thought about trying it. Like, I think, you know, before we, we, like, researched, before we talked about it, I was like, ah, okay, whatever. I've never been hypnotized before. But with all of that, it's like, you know would be fun to at least try you know I, you know yeah the would absolutely. you wheel i would totally yeah yeah i would i would totally and and this the whole role play the c c and c part of it i i be like yeah that'd be fun <laughs> it would be it'd be a lot of fun a lot of fun what about you chef i think i mean for the longest time i've kind of closed myself off to that stuff because i didn't think it was you know possible to play with and all that but I believe if it, the ability was there I would love to dive into it and enjoy all the experimentations and fun that comes thereof <laughs> yeah alright well while, while we're making our final point I want to go ahead and tell you I did spin the wheel oh gracious yeah and uh, I'm going to, I want to apologize to our audience right now because mm-hmm. I can guarantee, even though what we're talking about next week is the most uh, unkinky, like unsexual thing we've ever talked about, it's probably going to be one of our most offensive episodes ever. Offensive? Oh, I'm going to be talking like this all the time. Good day, mate. Is it accents? Are we talking We're accents? talking accents. <laughs> And I'm going to be doing horrible accents. Can I talk Check it out all day long? I'll just talk. I'll just talk Southern the whole time. Just the whole time. My Southern Bill accent. Like I said, it's going to be the most offensive episode we've ever done. It can't be, be offensive. It's my if it was my natural accent. It can't be. It can't be offensive if that's like. I don't that's have fair, a but I'm not going to talk accent. in my natural accent. I do. I have a. I talk I like this, y'all. Hmm. I don't care. I talk like a southern boy. I talk like a shepherd. <laughs> All right. That said, uh, I do want to remind everyone that we are, in fact, on that social media. And you guys should follow us at Dinks with Kinks on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yes, and uh, if you like this podcast, there is a uh, other podcast uh, hosted <laughs> by our Miss Rebecca called Release Your Kinkster. It's available Release anywhere you listen kinkster. to podcasts. Release the kinkster. Sorry. Like release the kraken. Uh, <laughs> Release the Kraken, release the Kingster. Release the Kingster. Uh, and check that out as well. It's it's a fantastic podcast. More for the people who are not not so much like looking for why release kink is, but how kink is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, very much like for the beginning Kingster for and and just very much just diving into sort of the more less about like specific kinks, but more about just overall things that you experience as a Kingster, and you know that you might struggle with, and you know you have to go through. <laughs> yep. But that's our episode, and we will see you sexy people uh, next week. I'm your host, John Andero, and with me as always, Miss Rebecca and Mr. Shep. Bye now. Till the next time. Aloha. Aloha.